Okay, so today we're going to be going over the properties and type properties of ceilings and roofs. Um, so I've got a, a kind of basic model um, here, just some walls, a roof, and then I threw a ceiling in underneath here that we'll get to here in a little bit. But um, the properties and type properties of roofs and ceilings are fairly similar. Um, that's why I've kind of grouped them together in this series of uh, videos here. Um, but as we kind of get into this, um, we're going to do roofs first, and then we'll get into ceilings because the ceilings are a little bit more, little bit more basic than the roofs are. So if we click on our roof and we go over here to our properties window, we can see uh, kind of our the same sort of layout as most other um, kind of components and walls and windows, doors, all of that sort of stuff. We've got our constraints here uh, where we can set up what the base level of the roof is. Right now it's on level two. Um, we can offset that from level two uh, to whatever we really want. We could offset it six inches a foot. We could even drop it down six inches if we want to. Um, this little room bounding um, option here, this is for whether or not you want this to define uh, the space beneath it. So if you're going to be doing uh, room tags and using data that that room tag gives you, that room tag could give you the uh, kind of square footage area, but it could also give you volume. Um, this is more for the volume aspect of it. Is this defining the top of that space um, so that Revit can calculate the volume of that room for you. Um, whoops. Then beyond that, uh, we've got our construction here. We've got the rafter cut, so how it polishes off the end here. So we can say two cut plum, where it basically chops it off horizontally. Uh, then we've also got two cut square, uh, which is somewhat similar. Um, depending on kind of where where you're at, it's more so this is, if we see here, um, both of those are in this particular instance end up being about the about the same thing, um, but then plum cut is the the vertical aspect of it. Um, so then we've also got some data here. Is this a rafter or a truss system? Uh, this could be thrown into some sort of schedule or data sheet uh, to let um, people in the field know: Is it going to be a rafter or a truss construction? method and then uh, this one maximum ridge height this can be beneficial for like code purposes um, submitting for permit and that sort of thing if you've got a height restriction on your building which in most cases there is um, you can determine exactly what the maximum ridge height uh, is for this um, then we get down into our dimensions here we've got our slope so everything in this entire uh, and this entire roof is all the same slope. It's all a 912. But if I wanted to drop that down, I could punch in 712. And all of a sudden, everything starts to kind of drop a little bit, um, which can make a make a little bit of a difference. If you're trying to get that uh, that maximum ridge height down, um, you can start to play play with this number. And and it'll automatically kind of populate and update that, that maximum ridge height for you. Um, then it also gives you some generic information here on the thickness of the roof. Right now we're in a generic 12 inch um, roof, so the thickness is a foot. Um, then it's also telling you the volume and the surface, the area that that roof encompasses. So um, those can be uh, decent numbers, um, okay numbers for calculating, you know, how many square of shingle or something like that that you're, you're looking at um, for bidding purposes and, and that sort of uh, thing. Then if there's any images that you want to use, comments, all just kind of text fields and upload fields. So the image data could be the shingle you want to use or if you're using a specialty um, uh, system for the roof, you can upload kind of information on that. Uh, then we've got our, our standard kind of phasing, whether it's an existing, is it going to be demoed, that sort of stuff. Getting into the edit type properties here, um, we'll jump back up to structure here in a minute, but uh, the graphics we've got similar to all of the kind of walls and that sort of stuff, the core skill, uh, scale fill pattern. So we can add a, a fill pattern to it and then what color we want that fill pattern to be. Um, the analytical properties of the roof uh, and then some identity data, just text boxes for scheduling and any data information that you want to build in for this. Um, a lot of times this identity data stuff can be really nice for uh, places like universities or large campuses 
uh, hospitals where they keep their model for maintenance purposes. So the maintenance team could have all the stuff associated with that. So, you know, what what brand name of certain things they're using for that system. So if they ever need to do maintenance on it, they can pull up the model, click on the item, and see exactly what um, what they need to be ordering or where they got it from previously. So then jumping back up to structure, this is very similar to the wall structure uh, that we've uh, talked about in other episodes, but we've got the, the option to break this out as a preview to see different stuff. Right now, we just have a generic one foot um, thick option here. We can insert layers and say we want uh, maybe a three quarter inch thick um, layer on the top and then we can insert <coughs> another one. Maybe this is a substrate and this one is going to be a finished layer and this is like your shingle layer or something like that and then you can apply the materials to that. So this, wor um, this is just how you build up your, your roofing system. Um, it is <clears throat> the idea of building every single truss in Revit um, isn't all that, it's not, it's not real conducive to that. Um, if you wanted to do a truss system, that, that gets to be pretty cumbersome and also will bog your model down quite a bit. So I would recommend just kind of using this as a basic at the very top level, you know, what kind of roofing system are you using here? Um, and then using doing trusses and stuff like that in wall sections and details and things like that. So um, so this is kind of how you build up your, your system here. Um, I will show you um, real quick if I come in and let's say I'm going to create a section through here. Let's create a section over here. So I've got my, my roof here and this is my, my ceiling down here. If for whatever reason I were to have, um, I'm going to use some detail lines here just to kind of map this out. So let's say I had, this was a parapet wall, maybe this isn't my roof, I've got a flat roof on the top of this, and I've got a parapet wall, and my roof system is actually sitting somewhere in here. And I've got like a membrane layer, and then a sheathing layer, and then I've got my uh, structural layer, and then I have my, um, my finished ceiling underneath there. A lot of people, what they'll do is they'll build this entire thing here as the roof system. They'll build it all the way down to maybe like, maybe like there, and then they'll have the half-inch ceiling um, down below. This would be a ceiling element that they model in, and this would all be a roof element that they model in. The problem with that is if you ever put recess lights to do a rendering for this space down here, if you ever put recess lights in here, it has to be hosted by the ceiling. So they put their recess lights in here, those recess lights come up and sit within the space like this. Well, that roof system is a solid entity here. And then your, your light emittance comes from up in this part of the light fixture. So now your light fixture is actually sitting within a solid block and it won't emit any light down into your space because the light is being emitted from within this like solid mass. So what I would recommend is actually doing this portion as your roof, leaving the structural element out of it. So there's no physical model for the actual structural element there. And then putting the half inch ceiling model in below. So now there's this void in here for this sort of stuff to sit up in there. Then all when you go to do your wall sections and building sections and stuff like that, you detail all of this out anyway. So there's th there doesn't need to be a solid mass in there. As long as you've got some sort of reference for this is where my roof system is starting, this is where my ceiling is, and this is the space I have in between to work with when I go to detail that out. Um, that helps get you both the, the roof, the ceiling, and the flexibility to add light fixtures and everything else for the space down below. So um, that's why kind of when you use ceilings, when you use roofs matters, because if you made this all a roof, um, you're going to end up with some problems. You're going to have to come back in and put a ceiling in and eliminate that little gap there um, if you ever want to do a rendering of the space below. If you're never going to do a rendering of the space below and you're never going to actually put lights into the ceiling, then great. Go ahead and use the entire um, 
thing as a roof, that's not a big deal. But I always like to have the flexibility of coming in later um, if a client says, hey, what's that actually going to look like? I, can, I don't have to go back and mess with that uh, when I'm going to do the rendering down here. So beyond that, we've got our ceiling system here. So I've got my ceiling. Um, we'll get into the properties of this as well. So um, we've got our height offset from, from level one. So our constraint is level one. It's level one ceiling, and then the height above level one is eight foot. So that to that is eight foot. Um, also has a room bounding option there. So if this has room bounding on and this has room bounding on, this is going to control. It's going to figure this space here. If you went to level two and did a room up here, then this would start to control. Um, tells you whether that ceiling has a slope or not. This one's obviously a flat ceiling, so it does not show a slope. Tells me what the perimeter of the entire ceiling is, the area that it encompasses, and um, the volume of, of that uh, kind of ceiling. Um, then we've also got our image comments, a mark number for the, uh, for the ceiling itself. If there are certain ceiling types that you've got going, you can input a mark. Phases just like the roof. Then we get into the, the structure, exact same as the roof assembly. You can add different layers to it, um, finishes, and all that sort of stuff. Um, it tells you your, your thickness of your roof before you even get into the structure of it. The coarse fill pattern and um, scale fill color. Uh, it's got all that stuff um, in there as well. The analytical properties, just like before, and then the exact same sort of identity data. So very similar to the roof options that, that are in there, but, um, but only slightly different, um, but also interact with your model differently than roofs do because they can host um, different things. Um, that being considered a, a roof category, that's being considered a ceiling category does make a difference um, when it's interacting with other things. So that's a general overview of kind of the properties and type properties of roofs and ceilings.